Yeah. So let's go ahead and set up some variables. So go ahead and open up Visual Studio, your code editor. This is what your script should have opened in by default. First, we want to make some variables, which are just values that we can control ourselves. We can change these as we want. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter after mouse look, after this bracket right here. I'm going to press enter a couple times. And then I'm going to create a variable. I need a variable to store how fast the mouse will move. So how fast your camera will turn as you move the mouse. So I'll want to make something called uh, mouse sensitivity. So I'll do public float mouse sensitivity. And then by setting that to public, I'll show you what that allows us to do in just a second. And we just want to give it a default value. I'll go ahead and set it to 100 for now. You just want to go ahead and set something in there. It could be 0, it could be 10, it could be 1,000. Just put something. And then we'll want something to link it to. So we need to get the player that our camera is attached to. So we'll go ahead and create a public transform and we'll name it player body. And if you remember, a transform in Unity is this right here. So it's this section right here. It's just the location and position and scale data of an object. So by linking a player's transform, we're capable of getting their location through code. Does that make sense to everyone? So here we have public transform player body. And then we want one more that we're going to use to store the player's rotation. And we're just going to call it float. And not notice how I didn't put public. I'll show you what that means in just one second. I'll do float x rotation, and we'll just set that to a default value again. We'll just set it to zero. So we just want it to start out so the player's not rotating at all. We just want them to be default staring straight ahead. And now if we go into Unity and open up our project, if I click on main camera and scroll down to our mouse look script, um, all you need to do is make sure you so on your script right here, before anything will change, you need to save it. So press Control S. That's just the save shortcut in pretty much every program. And then if you open up Unity, it should reload your assets. So if you scroll down and click on main camera right here, and then scroll down to the bottom, you can see those public variables that we set show up here now. So you can see anything we set to public will appear right here. And we can change these right here through the editor in the inspector window. We don't have to go into our code and change things anymore. All of it's right here for us. So let's say, let's say I don't like mouse sensitivity 100. Let's say I want it 150. If I just change it to 150 right there, it'll save that and it'll store it. So we don't have to worry about going into our code and changing values anymore. Everything is right there. But player body, none. And you'll see that in the parentheses, it's looking for a data type of transform. It's looking for a transform of some kind. So in order to link that, I'll click on the player right here, and I'll just drag them over to player body, and you'll see how it highlights it blue. And now it says player data type transform. So now we have linked our player to our camera. Pretty much in Visual Studio, you don't need to worry about absolutely anything at all. You only need to see this part right here, your code. You could use any text editor, but the reason we use Visual Studio is because of this thing called IntelliSense. And IntelliSense is, see how this changes color? So it's green, so I know that's what data type I have. Or how mouse look is this because it's the script, or how this is light green because it's the variable. That's what IntelliSense does, and that's why we use a code editor instead of just Notepad. Because you can program in Notepad if you want, but things aren't going to be formatted nicely. You can see how everything is tabbed, so it's all nice and even. We just use a code editor to keep things organized and easy to read. So up here, you can see it's using system collections, system collections generic, and Unity Engine. These are just libraries that it can pull functions from and features. You don't need to worry about any of these. You can add in extra libraries if there are extras that you want to pull functions from. But for our purposes, we will only have one exception later on, so you don't need to worry about this. Don't delete these. Don't change them. Don't add any. Just know what they do. It's basically like a section at the library. Like if you want to learn about fish, you'll go to the fish section. Or 
So, okay, so this is a really common issue, like probably the most common thing I see. Um, in Unity, so if your IntelliSense stops working, if, uh, if your text is just showing up as white or it's not changing color or anything and it's not auto-completing for you, just go into Unity, click Edit, Preferences, and then on this window, External Tools, and make sure your external script editor is set to Microsoft Visual Studio 2019 or whatever code editor you want. If you want to download a different one on your own time, feel free. But for now, we're using Visual Studio, so make sure that's the one it's set to. So when I assign these variables called floats, float is short for floating point, which is basically just a decimal capable of storing, I think, 40, point, 40 decimal places. Um, so you can get very, 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 very precise using floats. When you're programming, normally you're supposed to put an F at the end of your float values. But if you're using whole numbers, so if it has 100, that's, a, that's an integer. That's a whole number. You don't need that F there. You don't need it but it's best practice to put it there anyway. I just left it off for simplicity's sake. 